Uh, we heard that Zek was saying they delayed the printing of ballot papers because of uh, court cases that were brought about not just by the CCC but by other parties. We want to put on record that we should not have gone to court in the first place if Zek had been doing things properly. The fact that people were going to court <coughs> over commonsensical processes is in itself a great cause for concern. We would not have gone to court if Zeke had done things properly. But the paradox is that if we had not gone to court, it would have been worse. So, Zek must stop making flimsy excuses. They had five years to prepare for this election. We gave them a benefit of doubt. Unfortunately, they failed the test. Uh, we are also seeing a concern on, on, on some of the figures we are receiving on the ground. For example, some of the delimitation anomalies are the fact that we are supposed to have at least between 22,000 and 33,000 per constituents. I'm told that in Mbari, more than 43,000 voted. It means, therefore, that between February and, uh, the, uh, and the closure of the registration process, a curious 12,000 additional voters. <laughs> it's a red flag. It's also prevalent in Juru and in other areas. I think I've come to the end of our update. I will invite members of the press to ask questions. My sister Ellen will assist me with the, with the questions, with picking, and I'll, I'll be answering the questions. Media. Um, I wanted to ask uh, the uh, rumors that uh, uh, 
um, I don't know if I've been dismissed from the voice of the discourses. Uh, is it true? I don't know yet. Thank you for the questions. We are unable to give you the figures uh, because of the limitations of the law. We we'll wait for the official announcement uh, by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. But we are also collecting and tabulating the election <coughs> so we know what we're talking about. Um, Advocate my area has not been dismissed. Still an integral part of the movement. She's been redeployed elsewhere. And uh, the president will state those things. Um, currently, as you all know, Advocate Mahere is seized with campaigning in one of the problematic constituencies here in Harare. <coughs> Uh, I'm told actually that uh, it's a little bit hilly, hilly, hilly polling station in your constituency. The, the way problems around the, the, the display of, of the of the vehicles. So you can imagine the task at hand. I think uh, I would have answered. I've answered those two. I would defer the third question. <coughs> Uh, oh, okay, uh, uh, thank you. Um, in response to the question uh, regarding the issue of the ballot paper, you go to Section 52A of our Electoral Act. It's very clear uh, with respect to the duty of a ZEC uh, to inform uh, stakeholders, and also there is the overriding duty to be transparent and to be accountable. When talking about transparency, we would have we expected ZEC to give our stakeholders the opportunity to, to, in fact, not stakeholders, but the nominated candidates, the opportunity to inspect uh, the ballot paper. This has been the trend in the, in the previous elections. You go back to even the by-elections in March uh, uh, 22, 2022. Our, our candidates had the opportunity to inspect the ballot paper, to inspect uh, the ballot paper. And just like in, in 2018, if you could recall the ballot, Simple ballot paper that was in circulation, that was part of the inspection. But because uh, ZEC abrogated uh, its duty of being, uh, its responsibility of being uh, 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 transparent, this is why we are in a mess yesterday. You'd go, for example, in, uh, in wards, uh, in Bulawa, for example, ward 1 and ward, uh, 22, uh, uh, ward 22. We had cases where there was a mix up, you know, in those areas where some of our candidates, triple C candidates, were not on the ballot uh, paper. And also, you go to uh, one word in Jimba, you would realize that, uh, you know, there's uh, the name of the triple C candidate, but the, fa the face is a ZANU PF person. So, those are issues that could have been resolved uh, when uh, they could have opened up to stakeholders to, uh, to, to inspect uh, the ballot. So, in short, we never consulted and there was no uh, opportunity to inspect. And moreover, the issue of the design of uh, the ballot paper for the president. <coughs> we noted that they published the law. It's clear in the law that uh, the, the ballot paper should be in a single column and should be in alphabetical order. But because we're not consulted in the design and they chose not to follow the law, you realize that the ballot paper had two columns. And the, the two columns were meant <coughs> to, to profile Mr. Mnangawa so that he becomes number one on the ballot paper, which clearly, you know, we see some connivance uh, between Zek and, and uh, the incumbent. So these are the concerns uh, that we raised with regards to the ballot paper. Thank you. Any further questions? I would love to hear that from two speakers. Um, <clears throat> there are about uh, 39 uh, CSO members who were arrested, I think yesterday, uh, and uh, the government is alleging that they are working with you, the CCC. Um, how exactly are you, or were you working with them? Thank you. 
Any other questions? Yeah, one here. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Hey, John from the John McDermott from the Economist. If the PBT results that you put out are different in a negative way from the official ZEC results, what, in addition to a court challenge, would the CCC strategy be? For instance, would you call for a peaceful protest by your supporters? Uh, well, I, I cannot speak on behalf of the organizations, but to the best of my understanding, civil society organizations are independent <coughs> and impartial organizations. They work with everyone. They work with every stakeholder. ZANU, the CCC, wherever they want to work. So I think the, the, the statement by the government is, is inaccurate and really just, you know, trying to justify and unjustify the arrest. Uh, they should not even be talking about that because those people are not supposed to be arrested in the first place. And the, you know, the problem is that the arrests, they actually stain the credibility of the region. And you wonder how, 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 what the logic is there. Then in terms of the, 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 the election results, I think what you can say for now is that uh, we are monitoring the situation. Uh, we've learned a lot from the past, and uh, we will be responding according at the appropriate time. But what we want to assure the people of Zimbabwe is that we are not going to let the ZANPF get away with theft again. I think. Yeah, if there are no other questions. Yes, one, uh, one more. Um, just, I'm just received from the statement. Are you aware on the arrest of uh, election observers in a region called uh, Range? Uh, if yes, how many have been uh, arrested? Uh, if you are aware of any election observers have been arrested? Mm -hmm. No. We're not sure. Is there any? Uh, um, I will take the last three questions. My name is Anandra Prabhu, I'm a freelance journalist. So my question is emanating from uh, Chancellor Central, where I started yesterday. Which is that? Chancellor Central, where I started yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we spoke to the colleagues yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Chancellor Central, where I started yesterday. We spoke to the contesting candidate for CC, and we highlighted that there was a lot of people. He said the contesting candidate for some of the first people. And I think he said about 10 buses, which came from the places like Musarama, all the various uh, colleges in, in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, I wanted to hear your position. Uh, what are we going to, to do? <coughs> What's the plan? What's the design? We have been under the plan. Well, I'm not privy to the facts of, of, of that case. But as I say, we have separate different departments that are monitoring them who will respond to it when it is brought to our attention. Last one. I presume that the GPC has been engaging the police uh, for saving the electron anomalies in the places. So I want to know, in, with your engagements, are the police away of the shadow in good court, fast, and its activities, and what has been their communication or position concerning that? <coughs> um, yes, I think that the the only engagement that we had uh, with the police uh, with respect uh, to funds was when uh, they uh, violated uh, citizens and actually beat our people, like for example, the, the, the case in, uh, in uh, uh, Mabuku during the voters for inspection. The, the thing is, we all know who funds is. And uh, even when we report to the police. Even when we <coughs> talk to them, to say, these people, they are violating voters. No action has been taken. So clearly, as much as we can report out there, but nothing has been done. So this is why we are saying, as the citizens, we continue encouraging everyone out there not to be intimidated by, by fans because we clearly know that it's working with some people. 
And we are aware of the shenanigans that happened uh, uh, during our voting, where they intimidated voters. We are aware this is why we have concerns in some areas, like for example, in Mutasa South, that uh, Mutasa Central that he's talking about. We received cases of uh, intimidation done by parts. But then that didn't stop the citizens. Some were resilient, some thought, no, you know what, this is uh, time, the opportunity to bring about change. So they can do anything, but they will not change the hearts of citizens. But anyway, the bottom line is that as a party, we are monitoring their activities. We will ensure by all means, uh, democratic and peaceful means, that our people are protected out there. Ladies and gentlemen,